All set. So this is District Advisory Board meeting of October 20th, 2021, pursuant of Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021. This meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting might do so in the following manner. We assume on the webinar ID 824-1448-3355. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted and public participation in any public hearing conducted in this meeting shall be by remote means only. So we are um, in the meeting. Um, I see we don't have any attendees. Um, so the first item on the agenda is public comment. And we don't have any attendees. We had one email um we're requesting that we look at other configurations of the maps and we can discuss i don't know if you want to discuss it now or we can discuss it later um i think we should discuss it later because um of tracy's proposed change to our map also okay um, has a slight has a small relationship to that <clears throat> okay so we can discuss it later I don't see any other public comment. We have one attendee just join in. Um, if you want to make a comment, please raise your hand if you want to be recognized. Hey. Oh, it's the uh, council president. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, she's no. no hands. No hands, so we assume there is no public comment. Um, so our um, next item on the agenda is to approve meetings, meeting minutes, sorry. Love uh, we minutes. Have, we love minutes. We can have minutes. We have four minutes to approve. Yes. Actually, I have something that we have to do first, which is to decide who's taking the minutes tonight. Oh, that's true. Right. Any volunteers? I would, but I can't. I got too much going on right now with the election. Every single day is packed. I have um, Marlene. You're muted. I swore I would not do it again, but if there's nobody <laughs> else, then I will have to. I'll do it. Thank you. Thank you, Peggy. Um, Your minutes are awesome. Yeah, they won't be this time. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say. Um, okay. They can be so, brief. Keep them brief. Yes. So the first um, I'm going to call on the first is the minutes of September 21st. Um, uh, one second. I have to find them. They're all, I just went to the packet. No, 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 I went to the packet. No, no, I had them open. That's why I, I had them open and within my files. So um, is there any change for the September 21st um, minutes? Um, so I had a change uh, in the second public comment, I think it's I think it's number five. Um, Irena, it's I have to open them up, but I think Irena says that we started with the precincts, and then I remember that Tracy and I both noted that although we began with the precincts, the process has, was also a back and forth between districts and precincts, each influencing the other. Yeah. Yes, I agree with that comment. I mean, you can't do one without the other, but yeah, right. But the four thousand was a pretty big deal, so we did. Yes. So. Okay. Any other comment? No. So, do we have a motion to? Approve the minutes pending this change. 
Yes, I move that we approve pending that change. I second. Okay. Uh, Peggy Shannon? Aye. Mahe Kilani? Aye. Uh, Marilyn Blaustein? Aye. Um, Tracy Safian? Aye. Irene Hovne? Aye. Minute approved. Um, and I'm guessing I'm going to make uh, the changes if I have access to the word document. Um, I have to figure out. Yes, Sue, did you receive the word document originally from Joseph? No, I and get it. A... I'll look though. <clears throat> I'll okay. look. I mean, he's is he no longer able to be reached? Or well, he he did send the minutes for today. No. Yes, heard, he so. did. He so maybe. Morning. Morning. Oh, great. Okay. So. Um. So the next item is the minutes of September twenty eighth. Um. Any changes? Um, I had a very small change. Um, 3A, the second point of the second point. <laughs> I'd like to add the word extra. Uh, I did this a long time ago. So um, this is the 28th, right? Packet items 3A is discussion of district drawings. Um, let's see, 3A, second point of the second point. I don't. So providing extra weight? Yes. Oh, avoid providing extra weight. Yes. Thank you. Oh, providing extra weight, right? Yes. Okay. Um, any other comment or changes, corrections? No, these are very thorough. No. So somebody wants to make a motion. I make a motion to accept the minutes for the 28th of September. A second. Thanks. Marilyn Blaustein. Aye. Mahek Gelani. Aye. Peggy Shannon. Aye. Tracy Safian. Aye. Irene Hovne. Aye. So minutes approved. Okay. No. We're cruising. Min okay. What? Yeah. We're doing awesome. <laughs> Minutes of uh, October 5th. Let me move them forward. One second. Um, I had this. a comment on the votes when we were discussing the maps that we should say uh, the 410, the voting in the motion. Um, it's not clear. I, I don't know if it's clear that the one is abstained. Yeah, I thought, I thought that wasn't clear also. You usually okay. put the one at the end, right? It's like 401 for the I, abstaining vote. That's what I think also. Yeah. Okay. But we could just write it out. We could say the vote was four to zero, one abstention. Yeah. Right. That's fine. Any other comment? Uh, there's a typo, typo halfway down page three. Um, the word there's T-H-E-R-E-S either needs That's an right. apostrophe or to be made there is. Uh, page three, one, two. Which bullet point? Um, I knew you were gonna ask me that. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> you get to take the minutes and think at the same time um i'm not very good with that either no actually <laughs> i would there's actually one edit i would make as well oh but let's find the first edit that peggy yeah, had um, the, there okay so this is the bullet point that begins sue raised a concern with map three version two 
Okay. Okay. Yep. She said zero. Yeah. Um, Amherst would have to run an election there and staff would pre-think that there's a chance. Oh yeah. There is it the last word. Yep. Yep. Should just be yep. an apostrophe in there and yep. make it an IS. Okay. So, oh, and I guess um, the bullet, I guess this is page three, like one, two, three, four bullets from the top. So it says, Tracy said her counselor is in favor of her map and has other complaints about map one and plans to endorse map three. Well, first of all, I think I've worked on a number of the maps. So I don't know which is my map. Also, I do have two counselors in district three and they both have like different perspectives. But I think we could just say something like, you know, Tracy shared the concerns that the district three counselors had expressed about different versions of the maps. Can you and, send me a and phrase? Counselor, and Councillor Ryan, I can send a phrase. Can you send but a phrase? Councillor Ryan at that time, he did say that he planned to endorse the map three because he considered it preferable to the map one version five that we ultimately adopted. And he had indicated that in his newsletter to uh, District Three residents. Yeah, but can yeah. you send me a phrase so then yes. it's easier? Yeah, yeah, I can send you a phrase. Can I do that after the meeting though? Right, not yes. right. Bye. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, any other change? No. So I I move to approve the minutes of October fifth. Pending changes. Second. Thank you, Shannon. Aye. Tracy Safian. Aye. Okay, Gilani. Aye. Marilyn Blastein. Aye. Irene Jovne. Aye. So, um, passes. Now we have the minutes of October 12. Okay. Um, any. Any um, comments? This was the one we were halfway through and we said, we need a minute taker. Yeah, so, yes. thank you, Sue. Thank You're you, welcome. Sue, very much. It's a little sketchy, but I tried to remember. <laughs> and we acknowledge that our meeting couldn't, we didn't have quorum for two and a half hours after we called the meeting. Yes. Yeah, it's in there. It's in there. It's First in there. thing I state, due to technical difficulties, quorum was called at 8.33 p.m. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any changes? No? So I move to approve the minutes of October 12th. Second. Peggy Shannon. Aye. Ahit Gilani. Aye. Marlene Belaustein. Aye. Tracy Safian. Aye. Irene Jovne. Aye. One Thank that went without changes. Yes. Thank you, Sue, for taking those minutes. Oh, of course. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we're caught up on minutes. Woohoo. Yay. <laughs> so <laughs> now, um, packet material. And we have um, different items to consider. Um, somewhat linked and somewhat not. Maybe we start, um, I don't know even where to start. So um, I yes. would actually like to get a clarification about the time frame for yeah, what's when the council is going to be, I mean, I'm assuming it's going back to the council on the 25th, but in terms of what has to be ready by the 25th, I mean, I'm fine with it going back on the 25th, but it seems like the guidance from the state has sort of said it's not actually like a hard, like do on, the, you know, do at the end of the month deadline. And so, um, I don't know. So, so they I mean, I, it's going back to the council and the council is stated to vote on the document on uh -huh. the 25th. Okay. Uh, um, that hasn't changed. 
um, right. from the emails that we got the clarification from the state. Uh, the October 30th deadline maybe was a permanent from sometime in the past, but it has to be as soon as possible. Understood. Um, but like, for example, I was wondering because the the the, the item that they, they was talked at the town council that we had time until December fifteen. That's not true, because the LERC, the LEDRC has to prove it before right. December fifteen. So they, they need to approve it, and if there are changes, we still have one week to make changes. So it has to be sent as soon as possible so that they can have time to consider it. Absolutely. But I meant, for example, like I can see us making some minor or possibly more than minor changes to the final report a little, though I thought it was pretty good the way it was. Um, yeah. And also, if Councillor Haneke, you know, if any request did come in to change things with the map or something that, like, for example, we could hold off doing the legal descriptions until after the council meeting and we could just. I would try and I, to and I don't even know if we need to have a final vote on the legal descriptions. I mean, that just seems like I would like to send that. everything as close as possible for the uh, for the 25th. Okay. This is our recommendation. Uh, we can talk more about this. Our yeah, recommendation right. is our recommendation. The town council would might change the view. This is my view, but we can discuss this. Um, yeah, of course. Okay. So that's the timeline. So we have three items, I think, to consider that are somewhat linked. One, whether do we want to make any change to re the report based on the feedback that we have? And that has to do with Tracy is proposing a minor change, a minor change in the map to accommodate some of the comments that we got at the town council mm -hmm. about splitting the village centers. And we'll yes, so I mean, I can speak to those briefly if now is a good time. Yes. Um, wait, so wait. At, I just, I just am not clear. Sure. Did you mean you said there were three things? I think it, but they're all linked. One is whether we want to make any changes to the report. Uh -huh. Two is the map. Yep. Um, three is the letter um, again to respond to the council comments on the council that Tracy okay. wrote. Okay. Good. And, yeah, so. it's, and it's linked to the email from that we received late this afternoon, just before our meeting started. Okay. So they are all I mean, I, So it's not easy to start I, with one. I guess I would propose. I see the report as sort of the last piece. Yes. Because we could talk about the map, and we could also talk about my memo. I mean, one idea I had with my memo is that we could provide it to the council separately, but we could also incorporate it like as an appendix or something into our report if we okay. so chose or something. Um, and so perhaps, can we talk about the map maybe? Okay, so one thing I want to clarify, uh, the report we already submitted is a public document. I think the one that we, our recommendation already went through, we might adjust so that it reflects the final product, but that would be a version two of our final report, but. Of course, I will we have at a new date, we would just say revised, you know, based on public feedback yes. or something. Yeah. With the new date. And okay. um, the council president did tell me earlier today that if we were sending any updated materials, she would like to have them by Friday so that they could be distributed to the counselors before the Monday meeting. Okay. So uh, Tracy, do you want to share the map? Yeah. I can share the map. Um, and I also, so, um, I mean, I know we were all at the meeting on Monday and, you know, I did hear, well, one, we've had comment, we've heard comments before about breaking up the Pomeroy Village Center. So I did propose just after hearing those comments previously, including at the district five meetings, as well as at the council meeting, I did propose a tweak that I think only moves like three, you know, four census blocks and the numbers balanced. I think that's because of the changes that were made around Hampshire College, um, which I hadn't been involved with, but mm. no, I don't know. Because no. before I know that I had tried to do it before and it wasn't working, but I don't know, just a new set of eyes, but I oh, can you know, show. Yeah, I think it's probably because of the change that we made um, 
around district two that that changed the uh, number of people and five that you know ripple down but anyway go ahead but anyway i mean the numbers are always so tight right it's hard to change anything mm -hmm. um and so, so 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 with this proposal what it was proposing to do so originally i had been the one who originally came up with Tracy. this section Tracy, yes. yes, you know, so you are the page of the new government. Oh, sorry, you, I know. You know. All right, I'll just, all right, let's just share the document. Let's try and, okay, hold on, let me try that again. Too many screens, okay. There. Okay. All right. Um, so after hearing those concerns, I went. So I was the one who had originally proposed for this yellow precinct, Precinct Seven, that it go all the way out to Shea Street. Um, the original version of it, you know, we had a while back, was that that this this precinct would cut off at West Street. And I was concerned about that one because Crocker Farm School, where this Precinct 7 votes is actually on the other side, on the east side of West Street. And I also was thinking about these neighborhoods, like for example, these neighborhoods right here are literally like within like, you know, a couple hundred yards of Crocker Farm. They're right adjacent to Crocker Farm. And, and I also knew just as a Crocker Farm parent, you know, I knew a lot of people who lived along Shea Street and things. And so I was the one who extended it all the way out to all the way out to the South Village, um, the historic South Village Center, South Amherst Center. Um, but I do think it is important to keep the Pomeroy Village together. And as I thought about it, you know, one thing with it extending so far out, one, it looked a little weird, but, but then also it is also then splitting up the historic South Amherst Village a little bit. And so I think a good case can be made for reuniting that as well as this. Um, and particularly, you know, this is an area that the town is hoping to use as like a future economic village center with like more and more activity and things and to keep it together. Um, so the only thing that that resulted is so it does cut, it does cut that initial shape a little bit, you know, along a line, like along one of the like rivers or something. But I didn't think that that would actually be like the hugest issue. That's, um, a, that's the train tracks or the well i'd like to speak to no, that after yes. after tracy published her map i went down i drove through that neighborhood because i wanted to see exactly what oh, the break would okay, look like sure um below south of pomeroy lane between pomeroy okay. and hot wine is a river yes. and that is a very That's natural break it's it's a really okay. it, it's a much better break than most of our breaks okay <laughs> um the one north okay. Yes. <laughs> Between Shea Street, the straight line is a power line cut. Okay. And um, for part of the neighborhood, it feels like also a, a really good break and for part of it, less so. Um, but I think overall, these um, are physical um, barriers that are actually work better than streets um, in general. So I'm in favor of this. I think it, well, I, for the reasons that Tracy already spoke, and I, I don't, I think the, the loss is that part of Shea Street gets cut off from the other part, but they were already cut off. Well, and <laughs> so. I think too, so one of the things is right that currently precinct, I mean, I don't know if this will always be the case, but currently precinct eight votes at Munson, and right, Precinct 7 votes at Crocker, but mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. the people who live along here, they're not very far from Munson. Like right. even if you go out to like the edge of eight right over here. Right, I mean, um, but I think- a very short I, distance. I think the strongest point is that it keeps the old village- This village center, together the, the, and it keeps and this yes, together. The, I think, yes, that's something that yes, we had not considered Especially before. this one. And so I did, um, I asked Mike to draft the map, which he did. Um, I shared it with the district five counselors and they were both very happy with it. Um, I didn't, you know, take it much beyond that. We've only had a few days, but it seemed like it was overall positive. And I think it does address both the comments that we heard at the council meeting about us splitting up village centers. And it also, um, and you know, that some South Amherst residents have had as well. So, so I hope we could vote in favor of it. Marilyn. 
So did you just expand District 3 or did, were there any other changes? I had a little difficulty following. I know you, I see what you did. So all I did is take this little triangle out, right? It moved this from being yellow to being the precinct eight. And then it, in exchange, it, it moved a little bit of this okay. area. So it's it was eight. Yeah. So did because this down here, south of Pomeroy Lane was originally all eight. Okay. But then that split the village. It, I mean, I think it, it only changes, I don't know, like 50 people or something that 50 60 people and you're in and tracy that is a, a great point that you made about that area being a center of that i know that the planning department is is focusing on you know thinking about reinvigorating like more of a center mm -hmm. that is a great yeah. point it's something I, I i wish i would have remembered when we were going through oh. all of this i've written a memo about that because we i'm on the i'm the transportation yeah. advisory chair mm -hmm. and we recommend a roundabout okay so um <laughs> So I don't know, how do people feel? Could Do people feel comfortable if we vote to adopt this change to our map? I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem. And okay. I think we, we're we gonna have to write the, we, we write the report or write one page addendum to explain why right. we are changing this one, but not, we had already the, the others, village center uh, that yeah. was raised, that's I, I, the east. I do want to talk about that east one a little bit because that came up again last night. But can we can we just finish talking about the South Amherst first? Okay. All right. So, so then I'll make I'll make a motion to adopt this version of the map. I second. Um. So let's vote. Uh, Mahed Gilani. Aye. Peggy Shannon. Aye. Tracy Safian. Aye. Marilyn Blaustein. Aye. Irene Hovne, aye. So we motion passed to update the map to the current version okay. as displayed. And then I think um, just, you know, just to acknowledge that we're changing this, um, I see that Mike now changed the language just to say map to be reviewed by the DAP. So we could say, you know, this this map was adopted, this map was approved by the DAB today or something. I just was starting to feel a little uncomfortable because we had this map that we called the final version map and it the date was 10 5, but we had actually tweaked it a number of times and call, basically, you know, referring to it as exactly the same map when there had been like little changes here and there. So I'd feel more comfortable if we had this updated date. Absolutely. And I think it's good okay. too that it also shows that we are responding to public comment, right? That we're responsive. So it's a yeah. win win for us. Um, and I did want to just speak briefly about this. I mean, I thought about reaching out to Councillor Ross after the meeting, but I didn't. Because I do recall at one of our meetings, we really did talk about the East Village Center for a while. Yeah. And I knew that I had done a version of the map where Salem Place, which is like over here, was included in six. And then, I mean, a good case was made for like keeping it in the downtown. Yeah. And Rene, I think you said you had lived in that area too. So, yeah. And I know so, originally, even my original map too, I think even like this section of five was like reconnected too. I, I just don't know how we talked about it at length and nobody thought that it was very important to connect all four corners of it no. to be in the same district. No, there so, is no, there is no real connection. I think from living there, there's no real connection. There is, um, there's no center actually there's no any activity that really there that's my view but I mean, and yes, also i mean there's also like i mean in terms of like activity right there's this corner here is also pretty this corner is more busy right so this is on the other side of fort river where it's like route nine and route yeah. nine and i mean this seems like this has quite a bit of activity but again yeah. the activity on the fort river side i don't know this is more yeah. Maryland part of town than mine, but it, I, I don't, does it feel like this whole area is connected? Because a lot of these are no. rentals, like student rentals and things that are connected to the downtown more than. Or, or commercial. East or commercial. Or East Amherst. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, there's a whole bunch of strip along in here. So. Maryland, I think but not on, on the other side of Route 9. On that side of Route 9, there is. Um, well, like going out this yeah, way. There's a. a 
I think there was a hotel that now is converted to apartments and uh, another business that- Well, and there's gone. Colonial Village and like all these yeah, things. Yeah, but those are further is, down. Right, no. I think the connection would have been the Fort River School area and possibly the East Street Common, but that's hardly ever used for any kinds of activities. So yeah. I would, I would say that I think the connection for East Amherst is. I mean, I don't. You know, it's not the kind of village center that people associate with. I think. No. No. I mean, do we feel like you know, in response to that comment? critique that we would want to say anything about why we didn't unite East Center Village Center more or just that we felt like the main components of the East Village Center was still kept together? I think the main components and the main links are kept together, um, the activities. Oh. I think if you, I mean, I think we've kept most of the residential areas together and what yeah. we haven't capped is the business district. But I think as someone said, it's, it's a lot of strip malls and there's, there don't seem to be any activities that are centered in that area. No. There's a big well, and, disconnect. I mean, and really, I mean, for the people, like I know, you know, there are student rentals and things along in here. And it really seems like they're connected and main, like they're really connected towards, you know, going towards the downtown, I think. Yeah. You know, they're not thinking about, well, East Amherst, <laughs> like going out anyway, so. Right. Yeah, no, they, they, the other side of the Northeast Street or East Street and Middle, I don't know what, how is it called a bit. I think it's Northeast, East and Southeast. Uh -huh. All that okay. area, there's more connections. I live both in Northeast Street and in the Echo Hill area. And I think this uh -huh. one reflects much more the. Okay. So, I mean, I think whether or not we put this into our report a little, but if we are speaking to the council again, not giving a full presentation, but maybe just some commentary in response to the comments that we heard, like we could just mention our thinking about East Village Center, as well as the South, like the Pomeroy Center. Okay. And could someone refresh me, where was the Village Center before? Was it yeah, in district? Exactly my question. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I, I mean, I, I always look at the map. I believe that this is, a, I think that I this think is it's exactly it's the it's same it's line because I yeah. originally, I was changing my map and I was putting um, the condos into six and that wasn't there before. Yeah, I think it's the same line as well. And I okay. and and although I, I think ideally we actually would want to try to unite the districts there as we are trying to unite the districts in South Amherst. The business, I'm sorry, not the districts, the businesses. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's less clear here that it's important and um, really we're following the line as it was before. Right. And so yeah. it's just another one of those trade-offs. True. I, I mean, feel very and we, and again, so I think we is. can mention it. Yeah, so the line currently is along Northeast Street as we thought. Um, it's currently exactly almost the same. I think actually the line is on College Street. So the only difference is this little section here would be the, you know, District 9 and not District 5 so between College and Main. But we shifted some of that because now 9 now has the Commonwealth College, the Honors College dorms. And so that pumped up the population of 9. And so we had to shift some of 5 accordingly, like some of 9 and 5. So that's the only difference, but otherwise it's, it's the same. So I think that, that those would be good points if we you know, wanted to have a few talking points in responding to the comments. Okay. Um, I just realized, um, Mike, on so could one of you upload the presentation that we made um, to the packet? I think- uh, Mike, can you, I'm at home. I don't have sure. access to, yeah, thank you. Yep. I, I forgot to that we should, have, we should yeah. have added the, the presentation that we made to the, to the town council, to the packet or some- or but, it's in, all, but well, yeah, it is also in the council packet. You could think it's in the council, okay. But I thought in our, yeah, yeah. In a, I no, don't know where fine. should I be, should have been. It's not a problem. Um, I can do it right now as we're speaking. And it's, it's, it's the one you shared at like 1.30 on Monday afternoon, right, Rena? Yeah. 
Okay. I think. And where do we want me to, in which uh, location do we want me to put it in the packet structure? I guess in today's maybe, right? Yeah, today's. Okay, yep, I'll do that right now. Thank you. So, uh, so we answered two comments that we had on the, so based on the comments that we had on Monday and the town council, we, oh, there's one more item that we have to think is about numbering. Um, I think the ma major comments were about the village centers. Well, and then there were the comments about disenfranchising the students and discriminating against them, which is why I had written that memo. Yeah, so I wanted to bring this up. So there's one more item that we need to talk is about the labeling of the precincts and districts. Remind me not that we need to vote on that. Um, I mean, do you want to talk about that now? Um, before we do that, there's one other thing I don't want to forget. Uh, remember, since we changed those precinct boundaries, that somebody's going to have to rewrite the legal description of them as well? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, okay. I can adjust that. Yeah. Okay. Just wanted to make sure that was on somebody's radar. Yeah. Um, so um, maybe we talk about now about the comment about disenfranchising the students and the memo because it links into the comments afterwards. Well, and also what we're going to do in terms of if we want to adjust our final report. Yeah. I mean, so, so the thing is, I, um, some of the language I thought that was made about that was very strong. And I know from being in our meetings how much we've thought about the dorms. I mean, the dorms are always a challenge. They, they were a challenge for the 2011 DAB. They're a challenge now. You know, there's no way um, to... There's no way to have a lot of districts in Amherst that aren't touching the dorms. And so it was helpful for me to write the memo just to kind of go back and see exactly what we did change with the dorm um, census box and what we didn't. And the reality is that we really did not change that much with the dorms. Like currently, as I noted in the memo, currently the UMass College dorms include six precincts and four districts, and that's still the case. So it's not like we created many more of them. And in fact, I also found that, you know, with the proposed, and also just because of the way the dorms are clustered, and they were clustered similarly in 2011, except for the Honors College dorm, is that, you know, there's only so many different ways you can group them. And so, you know, we were basically keeping the dorm complexes in the same for the most part, the same pairs that they are currently, though we moved a little bit, um, like some of the ones off of Eastman Lane and so on. And we did, of course, move some of them around um, the Southwest dorms. And but well, we we had to do because but I felt, the, but I felt no, of course, I mean, some of the beds. numbers, some of the numbers were changing, but I felt like pretty comfortable. Like as I went back and I noticed that, for example, that what I wrote in the memo, I think it was like you know that. It was like less than 21, 20% 20 of the students are changing pre um, changing districts, which is less than the general population. Um, and that, you know, so many of the students in terms of like voting access at the high school, right? That's almost 60% of the residents live in precincts where they would vote at the high school. We're not disenfranchising there. And there is still, so it does shift a little bit in terms of which district has the most students. So currently, I've heard though, I haven't calculated it, that district three, my district currently is 70% students. And, um, you know, with our new numbers, I think that because, because we shifted some of Southwest and we put the honors college that it would be the district with um, precinct nine and precinct 10. And that's about like 66% of students. So I thought, I mean, I tried to address those concerns in the memo. And, so, and I think uh, it's important too, just to note just that you know, with the we really didn't look at the voting data that much with the students because so many students aren't registered to vote. But but it does show, in terms of the distribution of residents, that I didn't feel like we were disenfranchising people. Okay, so Dee has her hand raised, and then Peggy. So I would just like to comment um, on the use of inflammatory language toward you all as a committee as a volunteer group and committee, I thought was unfounded and really unfair. And so that you all heard what they had to say and you approached it fact-based. 
I feel for your report, you need to do the exact same thing. Don't uh, kind of fall into this, this trap of um, the uh, and whatever they're feeling politically guide you. Just what you explained, Tracy, in a, in a more concise uh, manner in how you're going to talk about this is how we consider the students. You didn't disenfranchise them. You know, if there's some reason that it can be configured better to be more inclusive, um, certainly take uh, that advice, but write it in such a way as to make sure that you are adhering once again to the state guidelines. And I, I feel, as I said last night, that you all did your due diligence adhering to those guidelines, paying attention to registered voters and making sure those communities were as intact as could be. If you use language such as, you know, these are potential voters, these are, you know, um, voters, non-voters, whatever, then it does kind of trigger, particularly for folks who are elected in office, right, that somehow you're disenfranchising folks. But again, it, it's needless. They, they didn't have to use that type of language. Um, so I just don't want you all to be hurt by that. And, um, you know, and Again, yeah, the census that's guiding you. It's the residents. It's intact communities that you're trying to keep together. And write it as such. If you write it in such a way as to be defensive, then that's just, to me, going to trigger more of the questioning and um, going back to, you know, probably the same map that we have. So anyway, th that's my word of advice in listening uh, to what happened last night. Uh, just watch the wording and how you craft it and construct it in your report and stick to, you know, uh, census and residents and population. So, D, I don't know whether it's just on my end, but you're like fading in and out a lot. Is that, is anybody else having that with D or is yeah. it just me? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Because I was going to turn off, maybe you turn off your video or something. I just don't, okay. I have issues yeah, at my house sometime or something, I but. Cut it off. Yeah, I okay. Better. So I had You're better automatically. We love seeing you, but too. oh, okay. All no. Right. So can you hear me? Yeah, yes. Yes. Well, so I, yeah. Great. I was just saying when you write the report, just make sure it's about residents and not about voting populations or potential voters. I think those are triggering for po uh, politicians, basically, for folks who are elected in office. So use um, uh, wording that uh, speaks to the census numbers and speaks to residents and keeping intact populations uh, with certain geographic and other commonalities together. Um, and I, I think avoiding those words such as voters, potential voters, um, will help because all that does is create more questions for them or the ability rather to question it. So that's my words of my two cents words of advice. Well, and I think, I mean, the thing is, right. So um, just for that, for the student population, we don't have voter data, right? So that's why I did just go back to the demographics. So. Absolutely. But. And this is what I'm saying, just what you explained yeah, no. earlier, but write yeah. it in a concise manner because sure. you use other wording uh, for them. And again, these, these are folks who are elected in office. And if there's a way for some, not all, I think some heard you loud and clear and understood your arguments. And I think your arguments were sound, um, but others will, will try to use that. So, you know, I think stick to um, what's allotted by the state and uh, you'll be fine. I think you all have defended it extremely well last night. You argued your point, made the case as to why the maps look the way they do, and talked about the counters, you know, what an alternative, this would be the alternative, but then you'd have to do something else. So I, 
you know, I, I think it's a really specious argument that they presented last night. It's a red herring, and um, it kind of undermines uh, the work of this committee. And I just don't want you all to, to fall into that trap because you've come so far with a handful of people. <laughs> so, all right, that's it. Okay, can I have a turn? Yeah. So Dee, I actually very much appreciate what you're saying. Um, I, I'm just gonna add my thoughts, which is that um, one, your memo blew me away, Tracy. I think it's amazing um, to have all that information there. Um, the one piece that feels like it's missing, and, and I, I don't wanna speak to whether we include the memo or not, but I, I do think it's a, a great piece of work. Um, the one piece that's missing to me is that um, the argument that I heard on Monday night was um, that students are a community of interest and therefore we can't break them up into separate districts, that we should cluster them. And that's the argument that I feel like needs to be countered because I think that that's just not true. Well, um, and so and I, he, yeah. I would- You had, um, you had brought that I, up yourself. But, Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I did bring it up. Um, and so yeah. I haven't gone back to reread the report yet. I wanted to hear what happened at this meeting tonight, but I do feel like what I'd like to do is go back, change whatever language in there was so terribly offensive. I mean, I'm sure there are some phrases or some assumptions that, that really were poorly done. Happy to do that. Um, and then I think decide as a group whether we A, counter the community of interest piece and B, um, counter the sort of historical piece, which is what Tracy has put together. So I'd be curious to hear how other people feel. So first, Tracy, if you want to, does it link to the comment of Peggy? If not, we can do a round of people, how people feel about it. No, I comments. mean, I think, I just wanted to comment quickly on the community of interest and Peggy mentioned it at the council meeting, right? That you have this large population and actually, if you look at the students as a whole, like they're actually 60% of Amherst population. So they're a majority. And I thought you made a really important, and even the students in the dorms, it's 14,000 students. Right. So you, you made a really important point that that's not just one community and that's definitely true. Um, so, and what, one of the things I was trying to do in my memo because part of what I was hearing is that well, you did a really good job with the race equity in terms of voting equity, but what about the student equity? But that's sort of ignoring the fact that like some of our most, a lot of our diversity comes from the students. Like when you look at the diversity data and I know Peggy had looked at it in depth and I've looked at it some, it's just that the population, the census box that have the most racially diverse populations are in the college areas. Not to ignore the other communities as well, but there's definitely a tie-in, and so it seems a little false to just say that you have you have students and then you have diversity because the students are contributing to our diversity. Absolutely, Tracy, your point is is such an important one, and it is a common um, fallacy, right, or a common trope that people use to talk about groups and generalities that have no color, that have no um, diversity within them. So there's this assumption, well, they're students, therefore they're white in a sense, right? Um, or they're students and uh, you know they don't count as diversity. And we know, having taught at UMass, that um, the students bring diversity to this community lots of times. So, you know, I think it's, their critique was very problematic for me um, as, as a resident and as a person of color and how they were pitting um, these groups, uh, you know, uh, these two groups against one another in a sense. So, you know, I applaud you all for not falling into that trap. And I, I know you will attend to the language, but, um, you know, it, it, having your own definitions and specificity will help within your report, like define what is diversity perhaps, right? What does that mean in terms of this report? 
um, that that might help folks who will read it for the council, but then also 10 years from now. Okay, thanks. So, um, so before we were um, talking, I wanted to see how people feel about um, Peggy's comment and Tracy's comment, um, how to address the questions raised last time. Um, one is more data driven, the other one is, um, I don't know how to put it. Um, I don't know how to explain it. So Tracy, yes. I mean, I think to Peggy's, how the, uh, yeah. I mean, I think Peggy was suggesting going back to the report. I will admit I have not gone back to the report in the last yeah. 48 hours. Um, you know, I was looking, I was working on my memo um, and uh, I would like to share, I mean, no matter whatever we do, you know, with the memo, whether it becomes part of the report or not, I do hope that a plurality of the DAB like will support it or something that I could take it to the council um, okay. as the DAB. And if not, I can even speak just as a DAB member because I was, you know, I, I was in part responding like to some of the, as Dee was saying, like some of the inflammatory language and stuff, which, and, but I also found it really helpful. It was a really helpful exercise for me to go and look specifically at the student data in that type of detail and see all the things that we had done right, like as we suspected, but it was good to document that. And I can see perhaps like how in reading our report and sort of how we are framing it in terms of with the active voters, like if the focus that we had had on the demographic data and the census data got lost a little bit um, and it looked like we were doing a lot with the voter data and we really were not doing that much. Like that really came in just in the last few meetings. And part of that was when we were looking at how to distribute the precincts across the districts. Yeah. Um, so I would like to clarify that in our report. So you would like I mean, I would just like to revisit our report and, yeah. you know, and be more aware of how we could present what we did more strongly. So. Okay. Peggy, I agree. Yeah, Marilyn. So we did consider the active voter data. That was one of the reasons that we made some changes. Um, and it, in some ways it is front and center in the report. So how do we downplay that and still have you know have some integrity to the report you know I think it has it's, it's sort of the elephant in the room how do we address it and um, I think in some ways it's a, it's a big issue maybe it's not just it's maybe it's just looking at active voters rather than students but I think we did want to try to equalize the numbers of um, the precincts and districts based on the voter turnout at least based on one one election. So it, it's just a question, you know. Peggy? Um, I think that's brilliant, Marilyn. I mean, the, the we, I think in the report, we may have often, I may have often used the word students or dorms or whatever, when really if we just focus on active voters versus non-active voters and appreciate in the report that our numbers are, imperfect. We know that. But we also know that in general, the numbers that we have are somewhat reflect, are reflective of what actually happens in the town. Mm -hmm. So, And I think we may also want to address the issue that this was like one of the worst times to do this because of COVID and so many residents were not in town, mm -hmm. largely students, but we don't know who else left town or was not counted in Amherst. Right. Yeah, although they're not counted, but it's my understanding that at least the dorms, they get counted. I don't know how this yeah. done, right? So they did that. They, they, I mean, they, 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 the undercounting is mainly outside the dorms. The undercounting is mainly on Correct. residential uh, places. So that might be well, the undercounting. So yeah, yeah. yeah there was a, go ahead. Uh, hi, so I had a bit of uh, an issue with that because I remember from last meeting, uh, 
that Councillor Evan, I believe, said that using active voters would have like some kind of a political agenda behind it. So I just think that like, I, I don't really understand the logic behind that, but I'm just bringing it up because that might be uh, brought up next time if we change students and dorms to mostly active voters. Yeah, I mean, I personally yeah. thought that there were some false parallels there because in comparing us to Republican politicians who clear the voter rolls of all the inactive voters, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, we're not doing anything to the voter rolls, right? We are, well, what we're trying to do is have some metric that represents like who is voting. And the people who are voting are the people who are the, for the most part, the active voters. I mean, in that memo I wrote up, I mean, I was trying to, I don't think that either, I don't think that registered voters is a great metric because it's inactive and active voters. And active has some issues too. But we know that the voter turnout, particularly in local elections is not very big. And it tends to be the people who are the active voters, the people who fill out the town census, who keep their address updated, who vote in most of the elections. And from being an election worker in Amherst for over 20 years, I know that we have lists and lists. I mean, it was actually interesting when I went back and looked at the data that after the charter went through, we, we lost a lot of registered voters. The number went down from like over 20,000 to now it's currently at 16. I'm not sure where some of them went. <laughs> I mean, maybe there was some big clearing out of inactive voters or maybe the systems changed or something. But um, I mean, the reality is that there's a lot of inactive voters because, I mean, one of the reasons is that students who graduate, you know, are, stay inactive unless they register somewhere else in Massachusetts. And so you have this lag time of a few years before they're cleared off. And so it does not seem accurate to me to do any kind of analysis on the registered voters when we know that we have such a large inactive voter population including not just inactive voters that just haven't voted and they still live locally, as you might see in urban areas, but just people who aren't even there anymore. So, I, I mean, I think that of the different voter metrics available to us that I do think that active voter numbers were the best choice, though they're not perfect either. D and then Marlene. So Tracy, in this instance, I think qualitative um, data would, would be, more useful and and what i mean in a in a very you know i'm, I'm trying to be facetious here what Mahek is referring to um is a really important point because they're trying to undermine your use of active and inactive and in this case like i i suggested it has a different meaning than how evan ross used it and how Mandy Joe used it, and even how it is used nationally. You're using it with a certain specificity here in this community to not only to, to not just uh, talk about in general active people who were active um, voters and then people who were on the rolls but not voting. Okay, you're talking it sounds like to me about uh, a generalization around students, okay? And in some ways, the point is uh, unfair because that's not all students, right? It's a generalization, but based on trends and numbers, they are as a group not as active as the, the population of Amherst. Okay, in general, all right? For your sake in writing this report, it is, you know, in basic kind of research, you write, these are the working definitions for this report. These definitions have um, other meanings outside of this report, but for the purposes of this report, we are calling inactive voters, voters who are, um, you know, on the rolls, but not voting or have not. No, I mean, that's not past. right. There's not even well, that. Exactly. There. That they I'm, they I'm don't have current addresses. No, I, of course. No, no, Tracy, I mean, that's Tracy, why... Tracy, 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 hold up. 
I know exactly what you're saying. This is a hypothetical. What I am saying is that however you're going to define a student voter or a student non-voter, you need to do it. You all need to decide on what that definition looks like and put it in your report because it's going to come back the next time town council meets if it's not fully fleshed out and defined. So just what Mahek said, it's going to come up again. So I understand it has its own meaning, but you're going to have. Oh, do you mute we it? Lost we can't hear we you. No, I, I'm muted because that's all I have to say. So oh, okay. Gonna okay. Run, hello? <laughs> okay. Because so, you're going to run into the same problem and you're going to keep going in a circle. And I, I no. wish you would take time going back to what Mahek offered. It's right. important that you define it because just like Evan Ross tried to, to take you on this fishing expedition with his language, it's going to happen. Okay. Marilyn, you had a comment? You're muted. You're muted. I know. Okay. Thanks. Um, just getting back to Dee's point, I think in, in trying to be objective about it, I mean, Sue has explained the whole process of reviewing the voting roll, voter rolls and eliminating people from the active voter list. So it's in some ways we could say the state mandates that we do this. It's not a decision that the town is making. And because of the, the nature of the population, which is a transient population, we lose a lot of voters for a variety so, of reasons. But I think, you know, we, we need to, I think that should probably be more front and center in the report explaining why the numbers of active voters versus registered voters is so low. So I have a, uh, I was just looking, the incoming freshman class is 5, 000, over 5,000 students. So each year, I don't know if uh, each year there's an exchange, there should be a rate of exchange of 5,000 both 5,000 new residents every year, at least 5,000 new, these are the undergraduate, undergraduate is 5,000. So, yes, you you, know. so I was gonna say you get the undergraduate freshmen, transfer students, graduate students. That's a lot yeah, of so, students. So, so that's probably over 6,000 new residents every year to the town. So if all of them were to register, we would have um, how many? So it's five years. So 30,000, we potentially could have 30,000 inactive voters of people that have left the town. Well, and you're not counting in Hampshire and Amherst College too. Yeah, no, no, this, that's, just, yeah. that's just you so, must. So in my memo that I had written, that's where, because I realized it was an issue when I was sharing, you know, our report and some of our recommendations with some people and they were like, well, how come you're only using active voters? What about registered voters? And, and I think, you know, the word active, it makes it sound like, active voters are those people who are at the polls all the time when actually what active voter means in the definition that we're using from the state database are these are the active voters are the people who are registered voters who return this town census and their addresses are current in the system it does not actually mean that they are showing up at the polls like every single election so i mean that word active can be confusing and i mean i put it into my memo but if we're going to put it in the main report, which I think is a great idea, um, then we could take it out of there because it's it's a little awkward in there because it doesn't really ref it doesn't really talk about the arguments about why our map is doing a treating you know students fine you know treating students okay. It was just that I wanted to address that because it came up, and and I acknowledge in there in the language in there right I acknowledge that it's not a perfect metric, but it's better than using registered voters so. Peggy? Um, I want to say that I think we should do that. We should put our definition of active voters in the report. We yeah. should explain that we are using it as a proxy for, um, for the data that we don't have, which is some sense of how many of the people who move every year will vote. Um, and that we, un we understand it's imperfect, but it actually correlates fairly well with turnout and go from there. I also want to point out that a lot of those students 
choose not to change their reservation registration because they would prefer to vote in the communities in which they grew up, where they have more of a, an understanding of the town dynamics or whatever. Plus, there are eight to 10% of those students are international and can't vote also. So there's a lot of reasons why students don't vote, which has nothing to do with enfranchisement. Yeah, I think it, I think I, that, yeah, go ahead. Uh, and then I talked to several students since Monday and they were saying on purpose, they might be registered to vote, but on purpose they don't vote on local elections because they, they know they are very transient. At least the ones I've been talking, they said we are transient in this town, so we don't vote on the local elections, we vote on the national mm -hmm. elections. Sure. Or the state yeah. elections. I mean, the state, the state election state. turnout is pretty high, yeah. Every four years, we get a massive amount of voter registration forms. <laughs> and then every four years, you know, the people become inactive. It's, or not every four years, but it's just, there's cycles. It's, and it's always the same, always the same. Um, oh, I was so maybe say, that's when our number of registered voters will be back up in the 20,000s yes. and then yeah, if you you look, know, two years yeah. later it will be yeah, yeah. So, so, so you had another comment? Just yeah, quick comment. At the last conference that I attended, um, speaking to a lot of the other clerks, a lot of clerks actually advise their, from like the smaller towns that know their residents, advise the people going off to college to stay registered in their own community in their hometown community and not to register to vote when they get to college, which I thought was interesting. I just listen and take it all in, but I thought, oh, that's interesting. Quite a few clerks. Yeah, okay. we don't, we don't advise. Marley. Well, I, I just wanna say personal experience when my kids went to college, we in, tried to ensure they stayed registered in Amherst. So that's yeah. just one example. <laughs> okay. There you go. Yeah. Okay. okay. So um, we have to decide, um, so I mean, what I've been hearing is that there's going to be changes done to the report to reflect yes. these comments. Um, but I think we can convene the, the group that was working on the report before um, it's still active, I'm guessing, um, to make the changes. Everybody is OK with yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, yeah. we can have a working group that as long as yeah. it's not a majority like okay. a quorum of the committee. Okay. And uh, I mean, I thought I thought our first version of the report, I mean, that Peggy had pulled together, I thought it was done really well. And um, yeah. I mean, I'd be happy to not work a lot on the report though. I can add a few things. And okay. Marlene? Are we, go are we going to address Mandy Joe's? Um, yes, yeah, yes, no. Okay. So, but I wanted, and I wanted to know also the, the, uh, the memo from Tracy, how do people feel about adding it to the report or being sent send it independent of the report? I would send it independent. Um, or whether it needs edits or I want to I, I want everybody to have a way to not make a unilateral decision. Marvin? Marlene, do you have any opinion? I'm going to go call in everybody oh, to see how people um, feel about the, the... I think I would want to see what the revised memo looks like, but I don't know that it necessarily, and we talked about adding some yeah. definitions to the report. So I don't know whether it has to be part of the report or whether it should be separate, just based on what, you know, how the two end up. If it's, okay. if it's redundant, I'm not sure that it's necessarily should be part of the report, but I do think we probably need to address town council or there should be some memo to town council addressing some of those concerns. Okay, uh, Mahek. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Um, I for the most part, I actually just agree with what's being said. Um, so yeah, no comment. Okay. Okay, Peggy. Mm. I love the I, I love the memo. I really want the town council to see the memo. Um, <laughs> my question no is, do I want it to come as part of the report, 
as an appendix to the, I don't want it as part of the report. It could be appendix or report, or it could be sent from the DAB separately, or it could be sent from Tracy. And that's what I'm not sure. I think I'm inclined to have it sent either from the DAB separately, but from all of us or from Tracy and not be actually part of the report. Although of course it will be included in the paperwork in Sue's big book, no matter what, right? So. So I think I, mean, I would vote for one of those two, and I'm not sure which. My okay. idea of it being an appendix was just so that it would be like part of the record. You know, I was I was a little, I mean, I don't think it needs to be fully integrated into the report. Um, my idea was just so that, you know, when the 2021 DAB sits down or whatever the historic record is, that it's there. And it's not lost as, you know, some of the artifacts that came along before the final report. Um, I think, well, I think, you know, I mean, one thing, there's two different ways with the memo. I mean, I did, you know, spend some time on it and that we could just leave it standalone as it is. And just because like it was directly in response to the concerns raised. Um, I do have that discussion about active and active voters, which I could just leave it in that memo and then, but we also are going to integrate those into the report. And I think, but that's okay because, you know, that was just such a big part of what the um, inflammatory language was about. So that was one thing that I was responding to. Um, I feel pretty confident and good about like the different points I make in terms of how voters, student voters, I mean, sorry, student residents in Amherst are not being disenfranchised and we're not being discriminated against and ignored in our analysis, like in terms of, if you look at the, you know, both the UMass dorms, but then off-campus students and the Amherst College and Hampshire College students, as well as just the fact that we do have racially diverse students. And so, I mean, I like it as a standalone thing. I, I would be happy to send it with just my name on it. Um, but if like, if, no. we, if I wasn't gonna change it, if I wasn't gonna change it at all, I mean, I would, if, if people, if other people from the DAB wanted to support it as well, like that would be great because otherwise it sounds like it just is coming from me. <laughs> and, I uh, and I write that and I write the council memos on other things too. So they might be sort of tired of me. So if people wanted to vote to, uh, I think, I think I'm, one of, I'm one of those people, Tracy, but if so, if so, if you wanted to agree together to endorse it, that would be lovely. I think maybe one compromise would be I think Peggy, you wanted to address about the point about the students that are not a uniform population. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe one way to balance or uh, address this would be to have an appendix that it was response, like the title of the appendix would, would be so, so that it doesn't get lost, would be res response one, to comments on the on the presentation on 1020 so that it's attached but it's it's clear that it's in response to some comments that we got on the meeting right it's, it's, it's a different type of appendix on the on the appendix that we sent <laughs> before it was extra data mm -hmm. this would be uh -huh. this is version two of the report with an appendix that is response to uh if we were going to send it that way, I would like it to also be a standalone piece, okay. personally. And then, I mean, I was just thinking it could be in the appendix just as like an artifact of, you know, something the DAB produced if the DAB endorses it. But I have a feeling, I don't think that, you know, everybody will read through the whole report a second time or whatever. And, and I think it does just having a memo saying there, you know, response to counselor comments is more powerful than just folding it into the report, even if it's in the, especially, I guess, if it's in the appendix, because I don't okay. think it will get much view. I, I agree with all that. I, I agree. It's more too. powerful standalone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so what we're looking at now is that um, I would write a little, like a paragraph explaining why students are not really a community of interest to be protected by clustering. And we'd add that to the memo and then send the memo as um, on its own. And I'm in, I would be very happy to sign it, sign it as well and have our whole committee sign it. But of course that's yeah. up to everybody. Do we want to vote about signing or I'm here? 
I, I, I see PF heads nodding that people are willing to sign. I don't know, Mahek. I think you are the only one that I don't see how you feel about the memo. I think I feel pretty good about this one. And uh, like I said before, I agree. Uh, we should sign it. And then obviously things will come up along the way, but so far so good in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And, and of course everybody should get to see it before they put their name on it. So yeah, uh, edits will go out. Okay. So Tracy, if uh, Peggy, I, you can send that sure. paragraph to Tracy. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I guess, or we can, I can share it with Peggy and she can edit it accordingly. And then send and then, it out. And we can circulate something. Now, are we able to take a vote on it or do people feel comfortable voting on it with the proposed revisions? Because I don't think we can actually vote when we're not convened, can we? No. No, what we could, no. can we say that we will, we will send it with proposed revisions and what happens is it goes out to everybody and then all comments go back to Tracy and nobody else. And then yes. she incorporates the revisions and we go from, that's that's all legal, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so can we do, so we would do that, so we would vote. So to, we have a motion to send a memo uh, regarding the comments that we had on the council meeting regarding student population. Yes, I make that motion. And uh, that's the motion. And pending changes that we're gonna send a memo in response. Yeah, right. I make that motion. Okay, are pe I mean, are people okay if I send it as like a Word document or a PDF or something? Or We don't really want it to be a Google Doc, right? If it's, if we're not allowed to edit it. Do we? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Word or, or PDF or yes. something. All right. That's fine. So who seconds it? I can second it. Or yeah. I second. So okay. uh, Marilyn Blaustein? I said, I. Irene Hovne, I. Mahek Gelani? I. Peggy Shannon? I. Tracy Safian? I. Okay. So we have. Two comments. The third comment now we have is the email that we got late today, just before our meeting from Councillor um, Mandy Johanike regarding, uh, she was asking that we put the numbers as pairing. And I have an opinion on this, but I would like to hear opinions. Um, some of the comments that she's, the work that she's asking, we already, consider them and we already discarded them. One of the numbers is already in the report as an appendix. And the other pairing that she's suggesting, the first option it was one of the first pairings that we discarded that we didn't even, didn't make it out to our final maps. Um, that was discarded early on. Um, and my, and my recollection of this was because for multiple reasons, we discarded the disparities. One was because precinct six and eight together would make a very long district going all north to south. So that was discarded. We discarded immediately, even before we looked at active voters that again, it would create a huge imbalance. So that was, that's why we didn't even consider, we didn't recommend that pairing. Tracy? Yeah, so I did want to, I mean, just logistically. So, you know, initially when I read it, I I was thinking about all the work she was making us do and the fact that we've already considered a lot of these different options. But then I think one thing, one way we could do it, address it, is that I already have a lot of the numbers that she's asking but, for, right? She, no, I just want to, I mean. But Tracy, we not already. That we should, no, I we, agree. We, uh, that's not our recommendation with our it's recommendation, not recommendation that's not our recommendation and she can bring it i think she can bring up these numbers and propose these numbers the recommendation of the dib was we we consider these options and yes we as a committee we discarded yes them. yes but well, all i'm saying is i already so she proposed two different options alternative a we know alternative one alternative two Yes. The one option, the one to keep the pairings the way they are, 
Like, right, we even had that in our deck. That's because another we deck. Knew, we knew that people were going to bring it up. And so I already have those numbers. But you, they, they already have them. them. They, they have them already on the report. Well, right, but we didn't put, I don't think we put the other option in there. The one with the six and eight, which is just the hugest geographic precinct ever. It's way too but, big. Because we but discarded I that. No, I understand. But I, I mean, okay. <laughs> but all I'm saying is that, I mean, yes, I don't, I don't think it's, I don't think it's that respectful of all the effort that we put in and the facts, I mean, some of the language that in her email, for example, there's this portion, it says, I'm still unclear whether I will make a motion to alter the proposed districts on Monday night. And if so, which option I would choose. But I was told if I was thinking about it to forward the option to you so that the numbers could be crunched and they could be discussed at the DEB tonight. Like that email literally went out two hours before our meeting. The, right? less than I mean, we've already, we've already crunched the numbers. We've already looked at these factors. I mean, not to you know feed into her argument, but I personally would, I don't think that Mike should do any maps no. or anything because we don't even know okay. if she would propose any of these, she's just saying, oh, you know, just go ahead, do all my work, like crunch the numbers. And, but the reality is that I already have the numbers. I mean, I already have the numbers for alternative two. It's really easy for me to crunch numbers. I love spreadsheets. And we just send her those numbers and we just, I don't, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even do anything detailed. I would just say, these are the numbers with what you were asking for. And that, you know, we rejected both of those. And I don't think we need to say anything else. The question is, why do we, uh, so Peggy has said Peggy. I'm but, sorry. But I, I feel okay with responding in that limited way because Peggy. we already have the numbers. Um, I also calculated the numbers. We have the numbers. Um, my, what came through to me from that memo was was Mandy Joe's um, feeling that Southwest had to be reunited. And I just wondered if anybody understood why that was such a compelling argument for her. I'm just trying to understand. And so this is just a question. Does anybody know why it feels so important? No. She, she keeps okay. raising that. And the thing yeah. is, it's a freshman okay. dorm. I mean, it doesn't, uh, it's not compelling. Okay. <laughs> okay, I just so, wanted to make sure that I wasn't missing something. And okay. even the district three counselors who for whom that's their districts. I mean, the people who live in Southwest, like our students have spoken to how it's not it's not essential to reunite all of a Southwest in one district. And um, and the counselors don't think it's important to reunite Southwest in one district and so on. I just don't, yeah, so. Marilyn, you wanted to discuss the, the email before. I just, I wanted to make sure we addressed it, but I, yeah. I agree with the comments that have been made. That's That was my only point. Okay. So my response to this email is, we already consider that the DAB did not endorse these pairings, uh, that we already, let me see, we already calculate. So one of the numbers is on the report on the, on the first appendix and the other map consideration, we discarded them early on in our process because it didn't satisfy many of the requirements and the, we considered the fact that it would be one district going almost north to south of Amherst, not a good um, pairing. That was, uh, it, it remind me if I, that was, if that's why it, we It's not just that. north to south, it's that physically like uh, six and eight are the most rural of the districts. They're the ones that yeah. have the, they, they're the two, no, north there are two precincts yeah. that, don't have, that don't have any UMass dorms. Yeah. And so geographically, they physically occupy about like 40% of the town. It just is like completely weird. And I mean, I would doubt that the state might even approve it if you have this like huge, huge uh, district, personally. Yeah. It's, it's gigantic. It doesn't look I, good. I think a more compelling reason is voter turnout. But the turnout the is the highest you know, highest number of voters, active voters. Absolutely. Those yeah. are the two Which highest. Certainly dilute, two. Um, Everybody else, yeah. Everybody else. Yeah. So I think that's our response to the email. I'm... It's... Okay. So do we, do we provide her with any numbers or no? Well, do we provide her with the alternative one numbers just because we have them? 
she has access to the numbers, she can calculate it themselves. I'm, I don't know what, I think it's a, if, uh, maybe I'm getting into trouble here, but I, I think all of us, we can do the calculations five minutes, but it takes five minutes of our time that we cannot write finishing the report and doing uh, the work. No, I understand, right. And, and it, this is something I, that we have done in the past already. Yes. Um, we could we could also we could also say given the late hour that we just didn't have that she can go back just as we could to look at the numbers if those yeah. those maps were there. Yeah. But I, I mean I, I just I, don't I, want I, it. I, I don't I, I, Tracy, what happens if everybody sends us this kind of request? If we could have no, had well. 13 this request two hours before this meeting. I mean, um, I'm pretty sure that we will not receive a similar request from any other counselors. Um, and I, I, I mean, the main thing for me is that the email, one thing is that her email, the email request that came in only two hours before our meeting, is that it was sent, it was not sent to the DAB. It was no. sent to staff, right? Mm -hmm. It was yeah. sent to Mike and to Sue, and then mm -hmm. Sue forwarded it to us. But, you know, I have concerns about I mean, you know, staff, for example, Mike, who also can crunch the numbers and has generated lots of numbers too, like being asked because this is a council request to provide these numbers. And so I don't want to put any more work on his plate. And because we already have the numbers, I mean, I would, I would say very little about them, but I would just give them to her. And yes, it is like five minutes or whatever, but I just, I would rather just do that and make it go away. And we just describe that we've like rejected it. B. So Paul have uh, set up a process since the beginning. I think you should emphasize that process to also the counselors. And um, Marilyn is is right. It came in at the last minute. How were you all to take your time to consider this? Already you've, you've just spent um, a considerable amount of time uh, discussing it and it came in at the last minute. So um, I think you should follow your process. And with any, if, whether it's Mandy Joe or another counselor and inevitably there'll, there'll be someone else. Usually, um, yeah. go ahead. No, no, do you have something else or you to No, I just, just follow, I think you should um, follow your process and um, have, have it at that. That's all I'm saying. So our process had been that we would we did not guarantee that we would um, deal with anything if it didn't come in the night before. That's what I recall we had said. Yeah. Also, also do we work for, this is work done for somebody in particular? What request for somebody in particular that will be sending it to one particular person? We I find it weird that somebody is requesting us to calculate some numbers where they're publicly available for everybody. Because if it comes from us, it soon seems that we are endorsing these numbers. Uh, we are endorsing these pairings. And that's that's where my conflict is when we, if we send something back, it seems as the DAB is endorsing and about, open about the possibility of these other pairings. When we had, the DAB was endorsing one pairing not the other ones, based on our discussions. Um, so that's that's when I, I have a, the conflict of sending back, because then it seems as we, the DIB might endorse any of these other parents and we don't have any issue with these other parents. When the data is publicly available, accessible for everybody, all the person's numbers are there, all the voter which we have included in the, on the, we have it included in the report. All the data is there. My concern is if a mail goes out from us to the council, is saying, yeah, go ahead and uh, change the brand. Well, and you, I mean, you could refer to what, one of the versions of map one, right? Like one of the last versions of map one that actually have like the, those pairings, the ones that we rejected on the October 5th meeting. And we've only made a few tweaks since then or something like as you said the information's available that's what i would say and and, it, and it's in our report too 
I don't think we ever, I mean, I don't recall, well, I may have, but I don't recall running the, the pairings, the numbers on the pairings, because I thought that that six and eight was just too problematic. Yeah. Um, I don't remember running that, but you know, again, we didn't even so spreadsheets, but we we got to the point that we discarded so early that map because of the size and the environment that we didn't even look at the active voter registration that came much later. So it was of course, yes, yeah. yeah. We just we did we got rid of that before we got even to the voters. Um, so I guess one question I have, okay, if we if we just don't respond, I mean, what, I guess, how would we be responding directly to Councillor Haneke? Would we be preparing, you know, a response that would go to the town manager or to the rest of the council? Because no doubt she will share that she has made this request of us and particularly if we do not respond to it. And so I do think we need to have some type of response ready and do we think that it would be something that we would have to respond as a committee or would the chair be doing that individually? Well, it does say I was asked today by the town manager, so. Wait, Maybe what were you she, asked today about? Her email says, I was asked today by the town manager. No, because, by the way. So, so, but it seems that the town manager, if I had request to do it through this, it was, it was weird in the, Phrase. It wasn't clear that it's yeah. the town manager asking us to do this. It's like if I have questions, I should refer it to you. Mm -hmm. Who's the vice president? Now it does. It, it happens to be Evan Ross. Right. Right. By way of the vice president of the council to forward any proposals to reconfigure. But this Can was it? not asked during the meeting. Um, the and I would refer to your process, and um, I think it was Peggy that mentioned um, your process was um, that if something wasn't received in time, you you wouldn't consider it. I, I think that's reasonable. They adhere to those uh, most often. <laughs> they adhere to their those principles and their process. So why should this committee be any different, particularly um, in how it's phrased? Um, it makes it really strange and, and just lacking, honestly, uh, in, in kind of professional courtesy. You know, it's not even like it's a direct question from Mandy Joe. How disrespectful. So, you know, why should you take your time out to consider all of this that's publicly available? I mean, if anything, say, hey, didn't have enough time to consider it, got it at the last minute, and all the info you're asking for is publicly available. Thanks. I mean, yeah, should respond, we? But short and quick. Peggy? Of course, we have considered it, and that's yeah. part of the public record. So yes. if, if the problem, I mean, the, I think the problem, the whole situation was problematic, but we have now considered it. I think that perhaps what we should do is somebody either from, um, I can do it as vice chair, I don't care, is send an email to Mandy Joe saying, we, we read your memo. Um, by the way, both of those um, options were rejected earlier in our process, one very early, one more recently. We invite you to calculate the numbers yourself um, or, or refer back to, the packets to understand why that happened. Okay. Peggy, do you I, want to draft the email before you want me to send it or you send it? Whatever you like. <laughs> I can send it if you, I can put. Okay. Yeah. I'll draft I, it, you can send it. Okay. I also, like I, before, um, I also just want to mention, so, I mean, this, the DAB is a council committee. It is not a town manager committee. And so technically the council oversees our committee. Um, so I think, I mean, I definitely think something should go to the attention of the council, both the council president as well as the GOL, because the GOL was the council committee that was charged with 
creating the DAB and overseeing the DAB at the council committee level. Um, I mean, it's odd that this, like the language was saying about the town manager because the town manager has no official role in this DAB process at all. So that's just a comment. So, I mean, I'm hopefully whatever response is sent to Councillor Haneke that then those parties can be copied as well. So. Okay. okay, so just to be clear, you want the part, you want the GOL and the council president to be CC'd? I mean, I think it could just go, it can go to the council president, but I'll, but the GOL, I know George Ryan, you know, is the chair of the GOL and he's been involved in this process. You know, they were the ones who had the charge and came up with the membership and everything. So they're the two natural people and the vice president of the council was not involved in any way in an official capacity. Yeah. Okay. okay, so wrapping up all the things that we need to do, um, that we are still outstanding is the issue of labeling the precincts and the districts and the legal boundaries. Besides, we need to, the, the other things that we have discussed so far was uh, the memo, the report, and this email. So, um, uh, nothing. <laughs> We're all good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's only 740. Uh, yeah, oh, right. I have an announcement. So, <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, you want to go now with the announcements or we go afterwards? Can we? I, I don't care. I just need to make sure it happens. Okay. So, um, we have um, labeling of the prisons and districts, we were asked by the town council to teach the numbering of the precincts. Uh, so we had originally thought about using uh, letters for the districts and numbers for the prisons because people in the past have been attached to the precincts. But the council has asked us to model um, the labeling based on other towns. So to go with districts with numbers and precincts with letters. So having district one, precinct A and precinct B and so on. Um, I heard the suggestion, there was her suggestion that, and I thought it might be confusing in numbers where we have only two precincts that maybe we end up with precinct 1A next to precinct 2A across the street that might be so we have to be careful because people might get confused and might say oh, i'm present time i'm present day but district so maybe to label them 1a 1b so the prisons would be reflecting also the number of the district so it would be district one precinct 1a and precinct 1b so it's clear because if you see on the map you might end up having precinct A next to precinct A, but they're in different districts. So then if you put the number just in front, um, it is an indication of which district they belong to. Tracy? Um, yes, yeah, so uh, Councilor Haneke, when she was talking about how the numbering had been done, and I know that this was also mentioned in her initial email to the DAB before we had even met, but she was talking about the city of Springfield and I did look up how they do it and that's what they do. That they have 1A, 1B, 1C, 2A, 2B, TC and so on. So, and the first, the numbers are considered the wards which are our districts and then the letters are considered the precincts. And I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Cause you, it needs to have a clear definition so that a clear labeling so that people would understand what, um, what precinct they're in because the voting is still happening for us at the precinct level. Yeah. So yeah, my concern when we, when I heard the A, B, I was imagining the map where the precincts are next to each other and they have A's, two A's, but they're different districts and I was like, no. Um, no, so that no, was a no Springfield's map has them completely labeled one H, one B, like throughout and stuff, so. Okay. So Mike, when we yes. send the table to the state, 
um, mm -hmm. we should keep, um, so it should be district one, precinct 1A, mm -hmm. district one, precinct 1B, district Correct. two, two A, two B. Correct. Okay. Got it. Great. Yeah. And I was I just, I was just going to go off the model of the highest, uh, I don't even know. <laughs> the highest number previous precinct will be A and the lowest number will be B. So like in district one, we have um, precincts one and three. So precinct one was going to be A and uh -huh. three was going to be B. Just to make, I don't know. Yeah. That's, that's what I was That sounds do. good. Yeah. Any, I, I, my, my sort of originally was so that they next to each other so are not Days and not touching days, but uh, you need four colors for doing that. So I. So when I was. <laughs> in a map, you need at least four colors uh, for neighboring yeah. things to distinguish. <laughs> uh, we will need for later. So. <laughs> makes me so. think about when I was when I was really young. I think I was like, you know, first grade or something. I learned my blood type, and I was really pissed off that I wasn't an A, because <laughs> I, I assumed that made out meant I was the best. Um, so. It does mean that actually. Yeah, I'm an A. Yeah, I'm an A too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Are you positive or negative? No. <laughs> I know it is funny. Okay. Okay. Everyone's um, going to be learning. It's going to be a really big learning experience for the uh -huh. voters. Oh, I mean, yeah, so so that's that was my concern when they really told me tell us that we we kept the precinct as close as possible because people have the identity and then oh yeah, the way, yeah. we throw away all yeah. the names. I know. I mean, I, I do think it will take people a while to get used to because I think these yes. ten numbers have been around a long time and people know. I mean, yeah. you know, I've been to the precinct ten brunches and the I mean, people have identities around the numbers, but they can adjust. I mean, it's the same. I yeah, think it, I think it should be clear it comes from the town council and it didn't come from us. I agree because <laughs> I agree with you, Irena. I would have preferred to keep the precincts numbers, but yeah. and what and what do something different with the districts? Yeah, yeah. but letter the. But districts. I guess one thing yeah. is, I mean, but perhaps this is an acknowledgement from the council that you know that that town of Amherst is a city. So, I mean, perhaps we will see more city like and things that, because and it is really confusing. I mean, the fact that the state council, like the council, Tessa Neri, right, she's citing as mass general law sections that only apply to towns. I don't know. <laughs> that was like confusing to me. So, it's confusing that we have a town that's legally a city that we call a town. So, what, and the, I think it's going to be an issue next time in 10 years because it's going to be 15. Probably. They're going to change the 4,000. The 4,000 is out of date. Okay. So maybe it will still be 10. Okay. So um, that's one item. And so everybody's okay with the labeling. Okay. Yeah. Um, the next item that we need to prepare is the legal boundaries and Tracy, could you modify the borders for the two persons? I can look at seven and eight. They were affected. Yeah. OK. Yes. Can I ask uh, everybody to take a read at the legal boundaries, um, just to make sure that they, they make sense? And, there were um, there was one I saw. I didn't modify. Do we have a word version of it? Because I only see the PDF. Do we have a current word version? I think we could send it out. I have it. Oh, I can send it out. Oh. But um that's helpful just, you know, because it's easier to edit. Um but there was a one of the legal definitions, it was referring to the buildings like with I think one of the dorm complexes or something, right? In no, I, I did a lot with building names because in the borders of precinct three, two, and nine, the divisions are footpaths. No, yeah. So there are so footpaths, the way... one footpath going into another footpath that it goes between the dining common, one dining common and one residential no. building. So <laughs> I, I, yeah. I wanted to add before, besides walking 390 feet, I want to say walk 390 feet and it's the footpath between these two buildings because I guess, there's no other. No, 
Um, so in the Southwest dorms, because I did those and the census blocks are actually just these jagged lines that aren't even on footpaths. I mean, there are some that are on the paths and then there are some that are not. And I had thought that we couldn't actually refer to the building. So I usually started them from like the road, like there would be a road. And then I just referred so that you, I just didn't use the buildings. I just said you go like 200 feet south and then 100 feet east and i just like did the zigzag in my description and i didn't include the buildings but i don't know if they if I, we're legally allowed to include the buildings then that is really helpful i don't know i added them on top of the on top of the description of walk north oh, okay got on it on the footpath it's i said walk north on the footpath and then the building so um, if anybody has any comment, please send them to me, so changes, um, because we need to send it um, on Monday, with the packet on Monday. I would like to, to be included and have everything together um, before we send the final map and the things to be voted on Monday. Uh, so have you had um, the vote in letterhead from the town? How do, who has to take care of that part? I sent it, I've sent it twice now. Um, okay. Once to Lynn Griesmer and once to Athena today. She's got the format, it'll go on town council letterhead. Okay. So she's all set with that. Um, she asked me what we were sending to the counselors, but I was thinking that I didn't think they needed the legal description. I thought they're just having to give us that vote. Yeah. And we give them the map because that's what they're voting on and we give them our report. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you know, but I want to okay. have everything. So yeah. once it is done, then we can yeah. send. send it off. Yep. Yes. But anyway, they have, she has everything she needs. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Am I forgetting anything? Besides Peggy's comment, announcement? No? So Peggy, so we are on the things not anticipated 24 hours before? Right. Until, yes. Um, so Mindy Dom um, contacted me. She was at at least some or all of the meeting on Monday night um, and she had, uh, she had some concerns about the students, not anything about whether we had distributed them appropriately, but just whether um, there are policies in the town, the university and the state, which are making it more difficult for students to vote, um, which there certainly are. I mean, this whole question of how they get considered active or have to re-register when they move and all that stuff. So, she, so that's something that she is um, thinking about. And then, um, the one of the persons, people from the LEDRC, the one that's appointed by the attorney general actually contacted Mindy after reading about our redistricting story, I, I guess in the Gazette, but I'm not sure, um, and expressed that she wanted to talk about also student voting. So, um, so <laughs> Mindy called, Mindy called me and we talked about it and, um, and I basically said what we've been saying all along that I, I thought there were two issues. One is the question of whether we disenfranchise students. I didn't believe that we had. And the other is whether there are things that the town, the state and the university could do to make it easier for students to vote. And so we concentrated on that. And she is going to, if she hasn't already, she's gonna contact you, Sue, to understand much better about exactly what things get in the way um, and what the processes are. Um, and then she um, asked me, would it be okay to put the LEDRC person in contact with me? And I said, uh, that sounds, <laughs> that doesn't sound like a very appropriate <laughs> thing at this point. I think if it's just about um, students voting and, you know, the processes that get in the way, I think that might be fine. But if it has to do with districting, I assume that would not be fine. Anyway, I'm just letting you know that this happened. If, if um, there seems to be some interest on the part of this person whose name I don't know who it is, but um, in reaching out to me, I will make sure that we try to do it appropriately either with Irena or something. So 
And I would like okay. to follow up on that before anybody else speaks, if I could. Okay. Yep. Oh, okay. Uh, Marlin, Mahek, Tracy, oh. Sue. Okay. <laughs> okay, no, okay, you, what? okay. Me first? Marlin, Sue, Mahek, Tracy, okay. Who's first? <laughs> Are we playing Jean. Abbott and Costello? So, Me, okay. So, okay. So, so, um, so the thing about students having a hard time voting, they're no different than any other group in this town or anywhere. Um, if somebody moves, they have to re-register to vote. A student, a non-student, it doesn't matter. So um, we have worked multiple, multiple times over the years in trying to find ways to reach out to the students between the student government and our office in getting the word out that you need to re-register to vote when you move your dormitory. And sometimes it's successful, sometimes it's not. But um, we put things in there. I mean, we've had round tables. Of, we've had multiple, I, 10 people around the table from all the different colleges in how to reach the students on explaining to them that every time they move dormitories, they need to re-register to vote. We've had things on our website. So we've made multiple, multiple efforts. Um, it's something that we have to do every year, you know. Um, but um, so it's like they're not impeded from voting. They just need to know that anytime they move, they have to re-register to vote. And how do you get that across all the time? So okay. that's the first thing. And um, oh, I forgot the second thing. Go ahead, Peggy, you were gonna say something. You look I, like you. I just wanted to answer. I think that Mindy completely understands that. And she was thinking about whether um, maybe how the state does the census for voters. Maybe that shouldn't happen at the time of year that it does. Or okay. maybe the primary should be moved to the spring. That's what some college towns do or whatever. I mean, that she's, she's thinking bigger. Um, okay. okay. Maybe the university should be working a little harder to make it easy for the uh, students to get registered or to understand that. Maybe that shouldn't be up to the town, that kind of thing. So just so you know. Okay. Okay. No, that's okay. good to hear. Marlene, right. Mahek, and then Tracy. So I know that I think Am Hampshire College, all students have the same address. At yep. UMass, if they have first year dorms, by default, they're gonna be living somewhere else the following year. So is there a way that we can get one address for students living at UMass? Then, then we'd have to make know, them into residential district. Residential complex, so Southwest would have one and Northeast would have another and North would have another. I mean, Southwest has 5,500 students. I know, but it's like, and I don't know if you use, you have to use their official dorm address. Just I mean, there may be something to say. Is there, there a loophole there could, so hmm. that it could just be UMass Amherst 01003 or whatever? This is beyond okay. my office. Um, this would have to be, <laughs> I know, I know. Because yeah, I don't know how they I were set up Mindy to begin has with. any influence on that. I mean, that would be. You know, it's, it's not, not Mindy's decision. It's the voter registration system. Um, and it's how the street, how the town recognizes street names. There's a bunch of offices involved in this one. Our inspector. Um, yeah, I know that's that's huge. And so we have so many what addresses Amherst, for UMass. What does Amherst does College Amherst do? do? It's the same thing. Amherst College is almost the same as UMass. It's room number, dorm name, and they have multiple dorms. Same exact thing. Yeah. Mahek? Okay, so I would like to add two points. The thing about the address, yeah, that's that's extremely true. And it's really unfortunate because we even have to give the names of our room numbers and the dorms. You can't just be vague enough to say Amherst 01003. Um, and secondly, if it is a certain relief for um, Mindy, I, I, I do, uh, I'm pretty involved on campus about regarding voter registration and everything. So, uh, and also in touch with the student government. So in case it would be beneficial, I could also reach out to her. That would be great. Yeah. Perfect. That would be great. Do that. Can, Thank you. I have one suggestion. Can there be a voter registration like waiting for the students at whenever they move into a, a dorm saying, mm, you need sure. to re-register? Like uh, they go into the room the first time there's a voter registration card <laughs> for them. I yeah. believe we've proposed that. I think in their like orientation packet, we had voter registration uh -oh. forms in there one time. We've done all kinds of things. I mean, all kinds of things. Okay, Tracy. Yeah. Um, well, I was just going to comment that uh, I think that 
like so i would suggest i i do think that some of the press coverage possibly might have been misleading after some of the inflammatory statements that were made by certain <laughs> council members and that's what made it into the headline and that's why it went viral or whatever i mean so it's it's good that the ldrc is paying attention i guess but i'm sure that that was part of what motivated that call um I would suggest that we do send the final version of the report that we are submitting to the council, the revised version, as well as the memo that we wrote in response about the disenfranchisement and discrimination against student responding to that critique that that those go both to Mindy Dom and to the person who reached out from the LEDRC. But um, just to like keep and maybe even the media that we could tell them like the more complex story beyond the headlines. So um, I missed the headlines. And, um, I need to do my homework. I know I heard about it, but I didn't get a chance to read it. And um, I don't know. And heck, I'm excited that you're doing voter registration rolls with as somebody who's been involved with, um, you know, elections in Amherst for a long time. I'm sure Sue could speak to that too, that mm -hmm. just it's so important to like, make sure that the people actually get registered because there's always people who will come in to vote and say, I was on I, I participated in this on campus voter registration dive and we're not really sure what happened to them because they never ended up in Sue's office or they never entered the state database and it's complex. So I'm sure yeah. Sue perhaps would have guidance for you on that. I absolutely would. I, I applaud those yeah. efforts and I think it's great yeah. that students are getting involved and are registering to vote. So mm -hmm. Thank you yeah, so much. That's that's really nice of you to say. And uh, no, I'm definitely still making efforts. I see how students, you know, sometimes don't feel as motivated to cast their vote. But uh, yeah, it's an effort. And I, I assure you that I'll send that email just in case. Thank you. Um, so, um, oh. so you had a suggestion, yes? You, um, we have to talk about chair approving the chair, the um, of last set of minutes, giving you permission to approve the last set of minutes. Remember that. I make a motion to allow Irena <laughs> to approve the last set of minutes. <laughs> Somebody second. Second. Tracy Sefian. Uh, aye. <laughs> uh, Marilyn Blaustein. Aye. Peggy Shannon. Aye. Mahe Gilani. Aye. Irene Hovne. Aye. Um, so I think we have to do homeworks and I don't, I'm going to request to the town council whether do we have to post a meeting for Monday or? I think we, sh I think we should just in case we have a quorum. Mm -hmm. In case we have a quorum. In case we have a quorum at the council meeting. And yeah. and could you try to get um, from the council president, could you try to get clarification on when we'll be on the agenda? Yeah. I also know that the community safety working group is speaking on Monday. And if possible, I would love to go ahead of them because I'm hoping that our presentation, our time with them will be much shorter. Right. I yeah. don't, we're not planning a formal presentation. I think we would just speak to that we I don't made think, some update. Yeah, that we, we made updates some... and we have the memo and the report and they will stand largely on their own. But we can, I'm assuming we could speak in just, you know, 10 or 15 minutes about the updates that we made. I'd be yeah. happy to be part of that team to do that. Okay. Okay. Um, so yes, I'm gonna email Lynn requesting this. Okay. So we I'll have get one posted. more. Okay, yep. and in principle, after that meeting, we should not be meeting unless, um, depending on what happens on Monday, and unless um, we we'll hear once everything is submitted. So the next steps is if the town council approves it, um, everything should leave as soon as possible out. So, and then we're gonna hear at some point from the LERC, they're gonna take a vote on our map. And if they have changes, we need to reconvene and um, answer within one week. Um, right, so 
I would like to send us as soon as possible because there are some days I'm going to be out of reach in December. So we don't want to be, uh, I would like to happen before December, right? So well, no, 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 that's, no, Ellie, go ahead. I'm sorry, Maya. I was going to say, Irina, um, you know, one of the things that I just have a little bit of a concern about is us going into this meeting on Monday and then saying, oh, well, okay, the deadline isn't October 30th. Let's, let's think about it for another few weeks or something like that. I think it is important for us no. to notify that our time is, you know, you're going to be leaving. I, I don't, I don't think we should be pushing this too much later. I think we should try to be getting it no, and that's, soon. And that's what I heard on the town council the other day. Mm -hmm. right? The majority of I mean, the councillors wanted. That's done. what I heard. That's what I, I mean. Heard. They have a full agenda too. They don't need to go back to this. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's what well, I heard on the town council that they said even if the deadline they were thinking what's our next steps because that's. Yeah, that's what in particular I ask, right? And yeah. as far as getting it out, once we do finally have it all, I'll get it out because I need to make a copy for the records. Um, you know, Mike, Mike and I will work together on that because Mike, I assume you're going to have maps folded up and all kinds of things. So we have to send a hard copy. Yes, Peggy. We want to be really, we want to stand really firm and stand really together on this, that this is not something that we are extending, that we are done. We found we've developed a map that we really believe in and we want them to vote on it. Yeah. Good. I'll be there on the 25th. Okay, great. So we need to post it. I can't make it. I, are, I have a previous commitment, so I will not be there. Okay. Am, am I correct in understanding that the council could, could change the districts? I mean, they can't change the precincts, right? Um, but they could decide that they want a different district shape. Is that correct, Sue? They could want different district pairings. Or is is it our is I mean is it within would, their but, power to to say, oh, we want different district pairings? I don't I, know. I, mean, I think that they could actually say that they want something different. <laughs> like all that is not but, I mean, so I think they can I mean, do whatever we, they want, but it's not endorsed yeah. by the DAB. Right. Right. That's what I was yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's why I had us prepare the alternative numbers with the other pairings just in case it came up. But, um, why but, would we have but gone my, this whole process? But my main, gonna... but my main, I mean, when I was reaching out to people, when I was concerned after some of the comments that I heard that there could be counselor pushback um, in terms of accepting our pairings. I mean, I was really stressing to people at that time that like we're submitting the legal definitions of the precincts that you can't change the precincts and there's no reason to change the precincts and um, and that I mean we're an advisory board so I feel like the council could choose to make any configuration with the districts that they want and it's out of our hands and yeah so, so I think they gave our recommendation. I think what is clear this is a independent group. And the councillors might have, they have conflict, might have conflict of interest. They can decide what they want to do, but the district advisory board as an independent board is recommending mm -hmm. this. That's why I don't want to send to the comment of uh, Councillor Haneke, I don't want to send the numbers as coming from the DIB because then it seems as we are um, recommending that we are okay with this other parents where we spent the last over two months analyzing foreign day data and our recommendation was the other one. The council is free to do what they want, but it's not the recommendation of the DAB. I hope everybody agrees with my, uh, not everybody I, is I agree with I my I completely statement. agree. I completely agree we're advisory. I mean, most of the citizen committees we're, in Amherst we're advisory, advisory and, and we yeah and we so. are an independent committee whereas some councillors are not they have a best, that's why there's an independent committee and not mm -hmm. councillor because the councillors have might right. have a conflict of interest okay okay okay, okay.
Okay, so can we just recap our homework to make sure yes. I'll do what I need to do? So I will send out my memo to the committee and Peggy was gonna add a paragraph related to the communities of interest with the students. And I'll work on the updated legal descriptions of seven and eight to reflect the change on the map. And I'll also go through my other legal descriptions. And then we have the working group that's working on the report. Um, and Peggy's gonna take the lead on that initially. Um, and there's an the email to Councillor Haneke that will go out. Yeah, Councillor. So that. Peggy, I can. I'll I draft can start it. On, okay. I'll draft the Haneke email later tonight and send it to you, and then you can and, make okay. whatever changes. And I okay. don't know if we need to formally, like, if if a working group wants to meet, you know, a little bit before Monday just to talk about the main points we want to make at the at the council meeting. Maheck, I mean, I'm assuming to... we would talk briefly. Mahek, you want to do, raise your hand? Hi, I'm sorry. I just need to say that I need to leave uh, right now. So do we still have quorum? And not yeah. if you leave. So uh, I think we're we, done though. We're yeah, done. We? So we could somebody make a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, please. Okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I second. Okay. All right. Mahek Gelani? Uh, aye. Irene <laughs> Hovne, aye. Marilyn Blaustein? Aye. Peggy Shannon? Aye. Tracy Seffin. Aye. Okay. We'll see yeah, you soon. All right. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you so Bye. 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 Bye.